Unit 5.8 Practice Problems. Based off a kinetic study of the reaction represented in the equation above, which of the following mechanisms <coughs> for the reaction is proposed? Which of the following rate laws is consistent with the proposed mechanism? So um, for our rate laws, we need to go ahead and look at things that are uh, not going to uh, remain. Um, and so we are dealing with a slow reaction here. So our rate law is going to be based off of our step one reaction. Our step one reaction is going to be um, the hydrobromic acid and oxygen. Okay, um, we can eliminate anything that appears on the left hand side and on the right hand side of our uh, yields sign. And so we can see that the only thing that is left is the hydrobromic acid and the oxygen. Um, everything else gets eliminated and our rate law is going to be based off of um, uh, the hydrobromic acid and oxygen. Uh, so now we just need to try to figure out between option A and option B, uh, which is going to be um, our, our best case scenario here. And um, the reaction between the hydrobromic acid and oxygen specifically, um, we are dealing with a relatively slow reaction here, which means that uh, my increasing in concentration is not going to significantly speed up my reaction. So it is most likely not going to be a second order reaction and is instead going to be a first order reaction. So option choice B is my best choice there. Uh, a particle model shows, uh, shown above represents a proposed two-step mechanism for the destruction of ozone in the upper atmosphere. Based off of the proposed mechanism, which of the following is the rate law expression for the destruction of ozone? So, um, based off of this, we can see that um, uh, chlorine is going to be a catalyst. Uh, normally we would eliminate something that appears on the left hand side and on the right hand side. However, since it is a catalyst, it does um, increase the speed of the reaction. So uh, the rate of reaction is going to be affected by the amount of catalyst that is present there. Um, our uh, overall uh, reactant here is going to be the chlorine and the ozone. And so both of those should be present. And so that would leave us exclusively with option choice D. Which of the following uh, represents the rate law for the overall reaction that is consistent with the proposed mechanism? So uh, here we're going to eliminate anything that appears on the left hand side and on the right hand side. And uh, we are left with exclusively hydrogen and the um, uh, iodine chlorine product here. So that is going to eliminate those two. Uh, now I am between uh, these two here. I can see that the iodine chlorine re uh, reactant is still part of that very slow reactant thing. So that is most likely going to be a first order or a zero order. Uh, reaction versus a second order reaction uh, where I would be able to greatly increase the speed of the uh, overall reaction if I were to increase the uh, concentration of that. A reaction and its experimentally determined rate law are represented above. A chemist proposes two different mechanisms for the reaction which are given below. Based off of the information above, which of the following is true? So I can see that my overall rate of reaction is going to um, not include <clears throat> uh, Y at all. Uh, we have a couple of options for why Y is not included. First, it could just not affect the rate at all, um, or it could not be um, 
in the initial uh, reaction at all. So um, looking at these, I can see that I am a first order reaction here. So that means that my first reaction should be slow. Um, and I can see uh, that um, from here, uh, I am able to uh, go ahead and see that this matches the overall reaction here. Let's see. Okay, uh, this also overall matches um, that reaction there. So um, looking at everything here, I can see that the overall net equations match for both, which is good. Um, and that uh, x is going to be my determining factor where y either is there or it's is a zero order. Since y isn't present in either of the step one reactions, um, I don't see a reason to go ahead and eliminate either of those mechanisms. So I'm going to go ahead and say that both mechanism one and two are consistent with the rate law, where my determining factor is <clears throat> the concentration of x, since that is my slow reaction here. Everything else is uh, a fast reaction and <clears throat> is uh, consistent. When the concentration of substance B in the reaction above is doubled, all other factors being held constant, it is found that the rate of the reaction remains unchanged. The most probable explanation for the observation is, so uh, substance B being doubled and then my rate of reaction not changing at all means that the B is a zero order uh, reaction. It does not affect my rate of reaction at all. And so I am going to uh, go ahead and uh, check to see which re, uh, which explanation states that. The order of the reaction with respect to substance B is one. It is not a first order reaction. That if I doubled it, then it would also double the rate of reaction, so no. Substance B is not involved in any of the steps of the mechanism of the reaction. Uh, that's not, not true at all. Okay, just because it doesn't affect the rate of a reaction doesn't mean it's not included. Substance B is not involved in the rate determined step of the mechanism, but is involved in subsequent steps. That is possible, okay? Uh, it is also possible that it is just a zero order reaction. Uh, substance B is probably a catalyst, and as such, uh, the effect of the rate of the reaction is does not depend on its concentration. That is not true. Uh, catalysts uh, very much do depend on the concentration of the catalyst, and increasing the amount of a catalyst present would increase the rate of reaction. The reactant with the smallest coefficient in the balanced equation generally has little or no effect on the rate of reaction. That is uh, crazy pants, not true at all. Has absolutely nothing to do with anything and so should be eliminated immediately. Uh, the rate law for the reaction represented by the equation above is stated there. Uh, which of the following would uh, could be the first elementary step of the two-step mechanism for the reaction if the first step is slow and the second step is fast. So um, for our uh, first step here, <clears throat> um, if this is a two-step mechanism, that means that I need it to not immediately be this reaction here but also I need uh, the uh, nitrogen dioxide to be uh, part of the rate reaction here. So I can go ahead and eliminate option C and D uh, since those are just the actual uh, reactions there. Uh, this one is just fluorine instead of the uh, uh, diatomic fluorine, but uh, if I'm going to uh, have the diatomic fluorine be part of my um, uh, reactant there, then I'm gonna need it to be present. So since it's not there, it can go ahead and get eliminated. 
Then I'm looking at uh, between these two here, uh, I need something where I am representing uh, both since my uh, concentration for both is going to affect my rate of reaction. And then the first step needs to be slow, second step needs to be fast. Um, again, I need to uh, not completely successfully um, make my reaction and I need both present. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose B. A possible mechanism for the overall reaction represented above is, th is the following. Which of the following rate expressions agrees best with the possible mechanism? So um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, eliminate anything that um, appears on uh, both sides there. So that's just that. Um, my overall uh, reaction mechanism is going to be based off of um, my first step, since this is my slow step. That's gonna be my uh, like largest rate determining step is going to be the nitrogen monoxide uh, present there, okay? And um, I am not going to be including oxygen uh, at all. Okay, definitely not going to be including the diatomic, or sorry, the uh, dinitrogen dioxide uh, compound that is within the fast reaction only. And I'm not gonna include oxygen since my overall rate determining step is going to be coming from my slow reaction here. So I have uh, two uh, presence of uh, nitrogen monoxide here and uh, my only option left is going to be option A. So that is going to be my answer choice.